I'd like to begin today with a question. And the question is, how can we be? Let's assume we don't have to worry about our survival needs. We don't have to worry about food, clothing, shelter. We don't have to worry about love and affection. Let's just assume we've got all that sorted. How then should we live our lives? Or is that all there is to it? I think most of us would like to believe that that is the case, that there is nothing more to it. We've got to look after our basic survival. And once we've looked after our own survival, we'll look after the survival of our nearest and dearest. We'll look after our children until our children are old enough to have their own children. And so it goes. Is that it? Is that all there is to it? Are we optimising our lives? Some people might stress, well, we need to look after the planet. We should try and eradicate war and disease. We should look after our bodies. Some people even understand spirituality in these terms. Although I don't quite see what's spiritual about it. It's just purely materialist, surely. You're doing what you can to promote the expansion of the human race. Eradicate suffering, war, disease. There seems to be an assumption then that the planet Earth can accommodate an infinite number of human beings. Or perhaps there's an assumption that we'll all fly into the reaches of in inhospitable space to spread our seeds. So is this really what life's about? Is this how we should be propagating ourselves on a massive scale? It's a question which is pertinent to the Enlightenment practitioner. The Enlightenment practitioner is one who's touched Enlightenment. So the question arises, after having touched enlightenment, how do you proceed? And the verses that we're looking at now are concerned with this. They're concerned with how the enlightenment practitioner, referred to here as a yogin, should proceed. And it's described in terms of something called the middle way or the middle path. There are various practices various activities which are generally, generally regarded as spiritual. For example, meditation practices. But the previous verses described how these can bring us down. It can, be, it can lead us to what verse 353 calls to the way of the philosophers. And perhaps such a person, as well as practicing meditation, will start teaching. In which case, they have to start formulating their understanding. And this can lead to all sorts of problems. Especially if you're trying to do it in terms of the received teachings receive teachings about the middle path. And verse 356 is concerned with one of these teachings. It's called here the theory of no cause. I'll read it out. Verse 356. 
They imagine a theory of no cause, but their no cause is nihilistic. As they fail to understand external objects, they destroy the middle path. So this is quite severe. So what is this teaching of no cause? What is, what's important then in taking our enlightenment practice deeper is how we understand our basic existential situation. It needs to be examined and questioned. And the basic existential situation as far as modern understanding is concerned is that there's an individual here wandering around and experiencing an external world there here and there and that this individual is somehow through the mechanism of the senses experiencing this external world this is so obvious that it's not questioned but this verse is saying that this yogin, the enlightenment practitioner who's fallen into the way of the philosophers fails to understand external objects it's a cliche of spiritual teaching to say that the world is illusion or delusion and we should therefore reject it and try and find some kind of inner reality some kind of inner truth perhaps we can do this through meditation and this is what is meant by nihilistic it's a rejection of the world rejecting it as delusion it's often been mentioned in these teachings that there is no cause the world has no cause this has been explored in many of the previous verses and videos but this doesn't mean to say that we should dismiss it because there are things that we need to get on with like the basic survival necessities that were mentioned earlier we need to get on with that they're very real so the key here is to understand external objects and to understand the middle path and this is explored in more detail in the next two verses so let's cover these now verse 357 the attachment to existence is not abandoned for the fear of being nihilistic and they try to teach the middle path by means of assertion and negation so this rejection of the external world is a form of attachment you can get actively caught up in the idea that the world is delusion and so you struggle with that you struggle with it because you've forgotten what it means to be an enlightenment practitioner you can't actually see any alternative to the world so you get on with these meditation practices which can put you into some state of bliss so you get caught up into a particular dynamic here you want to promote your meditation you want to get into these so-called states of higher consciousness and this maybe means watching your behavior too you need to make sure you've got a good conscience because if you're going to get into these 
exalted meditative states. You've got to have a clear conscience. So this is where morality comes in. So basically what's meant here by assertion and negation is to do with meditation and morality. Meditation is what you're aiming for. And morality is what you're constraining. It's the do's and don'ts. It's all about what you're going to do and what you shouldn't do. But this is following on from the previous verse. This represents the destruction of the middle path. And the solution to it, what makes it all clear, is verse 358. When mind only is understood, external objects are abandoned and discrimination no more takes place. Here, the middle path is reached. So the key here is mind only. We don't judge the external world. We don't judge it as delusion. We don't judge it as second rate. As inferior to some kind of meditative, blissed out state. So the key here is mind only. And mind only is simple awareness. Mind only is what is aware of external objects. So we leave the external objects and come back to that which is aware of them. This is the middle path. We don't get caught up in what's out there, but we don't get caught up in what's in here either. We're not striving for some kind of inner bliss. We're practicing the equanimity of mind only. The equanimity of simple awareness. We can call it pure awareness because it's not aware of anything. Most of the time, it's aware of what's called external objects, the external world. But it's also aware of what could be called internal things, internal objects. Although in a sense they're external also, the objects of the mind. Feelings, moods. So in practice in the middle way, we actually navigate navigate between notions of an external world and our own moods, our own habit energy. So we abandon external objects, and this includes abandoning all our ideas and notions. These two are external objects. We abandon discrimination. And this is how the middle path is reached. This is spirituality. So in answer to the original question, how can we be in the world? Well, it doesn't really matter as long as you're practicing mind only. As long as this is understood. As long as you're practicing awareness.